draw all of the isomers of heptane. All right, I will. Let's start with the seven carbon chain that is heptane. That's seven in a row, no fanfare. If I chop one carbon off the end of that, I'm left with hexane, and that gives me the freedom to reattach that extra one carbon on any of these places. If I put it on either end, though, I've regenerated my heptane because I've extended the, the ends. So the safe places to put this methyl group are here on carbon two or here on carbon three. If I did it here on carbon four, then counting from the right hand side, one, two, three, I'd have the same thing that I have here, symmetry. And if I did it on this carbon, it would be the same as this molecule because I count from this end, one, two, it's carbon two again because of symmetry. Just two hexane isomers here for this heptane molecule. Let's cut it down to pentane. It's, things are gonna start to get freakier. Now I have two carbons that I get to put wherever I want. Now, I have one option to put them both on carbon two. I have another option to put them both on carbon three. If I put them both on carbon four, then I'd be back to this molecule, same thing because of symmetry. Where else could I put them? Well, I could split them up, put one on two and one on three. Where else could I put it? I could put one on two and one on four. Those, that's not the same as any of those. If I put it on three and four, then I'd have the same as two and three, just counted from the other side. There's actually one other option here, which is the one most kids forget. It's to give yourself the pentane and then attach an ethyl group, a two carbon chain to the middle. Heptane is the smallest alkane, C7H16, that allows you to have an ethyl substituent. Cool? Now let's see what we can do with butane. Let's, uh, let's do butane in a different color because I didn't organize this very well. If I do butane, that's four carbons and I need to put three in magical places. One, two, three gives me one option. Um, that's pretty much it. I can't attach an ethyl group to this because on either carbon two or three, it's gonna extend the chain beyond either this end carbon or that end carbon, so that's no good. And if I did two here and one there, it's the same thing, just rotate it around and that's it. All right, if I did propane, I'd run out of space because I'm not allowed to use the end carbons. I didn't even have a propane option for hexane if you've seen that video, so don't worry about it. Looks to me like we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine isomers of heptane, and we're done. I've drawn them all for you. Now I'm gonna extend this video a little longer and name them all. This is seven in a row. People call that heptane. These are six carbons long. It is hexane with a methyl group on carbon two. That makes it two methyl hexane, all one word. This is the same, but with the methyl group on carbon three, so it's three methyl hexane. And now I got my propanes to do, I mean pentanes. Huh. That would have been disaster. Here's my pentane root, but I got two methyl groups, both on carbon two. That's gonna give me two comma two dimethyl pentane. This one's the same, but they're both on carbon three. That's three three dimethyl pentane. This one is similar, but with the carbons on two and three, that's two comma three dimethyl Pentane, oh, I almost made a typo there. Here's another one that's similar, two comma four dimethyl pentane. I can't forget about the one I did here at the top. This has a single ethyl group on carbon three. That makes it three ethyl pentane. The last one here is all the way over here. It unbelievably was a butane and it had three methyl groups on it. That makes it trimethyl, and those methyl groups are on carbons two and two and three. That's two comma two comma three, trimethyl butane. Done, under five minutes. Who's your hero? I am. Don't at me. Best of luck.